Hi Twitch and welcome back. Um, I'm here with Quint uh, and we're doing another post announcement session. So that means that something that we launched in the keynote this morning mm -hmm. uh, and now we're going to do an extra special, re special recap here uh, right now. So Quint, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Thanks really excited to have you. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you launched today? Yeah, absolutely. So we launched uh, AWS Secrets Manager, right? And so AWS Secrets Manager is a new service that's all about helping developers uh, store, manage, and rotate their third-party uh, database credentials, or excuse me, database credentials, third-party access keys, all those sorts of different secrets that forever have been kind of embedded in, in weird and awkward ways within their code. Uh, we've now got a great new service for them to, to store them and use them much more securely. Well, I feel like that's one of the questions that's right up there with like, it's one of those hard questions, right? It's the right. same as like, what's your favorite editor? Which is, is it, how do you store your secrets? How right. do you take care of your secrets? Right. Um, so there's there's always there's always a different way to do it, and everyone always has kind of a different way to do it. So this Absolutely. is the the in-house secret management service. Absolutely. Which is the key part here. Absolutely. So we've been seeing so many people for so long do all sorts of super innovative things with KMS and S3 and Dynamo and other things to kind of roll their own approaches to this. And this is just a great uh, you know, proper AWS service to take that off their plates. Gotcha. So a proper actual managed service Absolutely. for secrets management. Absolutely. Cool. Um, can you help us understand why organizations should use something like Secrets Manager or, or, or why Secrets Management is such a hard problem to start with? Sure, absolutely. I realize that's two questions. Uh, ab absolutely. So uh, like, let's start with why it's a hard problem, right? So there's probably two aspects to that. One is forevermore, or for this point, uh, up to this point, uh, all sorts of organizations have been doing these weird back alley handoffs of their secrets, right? The database right. Uh, administrator creates the credential, we've got to get it to the developer, they've got to wire it through some orchestration system that gets it down to the code. There's a lot of human hands in there. And Everyone has a plain text secret somewhere. Exactly, exactly. And the, the, the second part of it is exactly that, right? At the end of the day, even though we go through all this cloak and dagger stuff, the database password ends up in an INI file or some other, you know, just basic clear text uh, config file somewhere on the system, and that's what this is all, really all about. Is, is a we're gonna we're we're wrapping proper governance around that, uh, you know, the, the separation of roles there, who has access or who puts the secrets in, and then where they're used from, with lots of fine grained permissions and things of that nature, and then b uh, just get, making those those all those comp files go away and turn those into great uh, API calls. What about things like? Um uh, like the actual, like the key part of it. So, like generating and regenerating the keys and rotating keys. Absolutely. How does that fit in here? Uh, so there's a, there's probably a couple parts to it, right? So one is uh, the the way you're going to get access to the secrets is using AWS uh, credentials, then mainly in the form of like an IAM role, right? And so that's a secret that already comes up through your infrastructure and is already automatically rotated for you. Uh, now you're going to use that to go and grab these new secrets uh, from the service, right? And so you've got you've got rotation uh, all around. Uh, but in the in the back end, uh, we're actually going to the service is going to manage the rotation for you. So if you've got a, a credential, and you know that's that's just something that because it's it's been such a risky proposition for a developer to to rotate these sorts of credentials, it just definitely doesn't end up happening, right? They might. Uh, yeah. You know, just they just sit there for months on end, right? Their 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 AWS credentials are rotating every six hours, but their database password hasn't been rotated in years. Two thousand seven. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So we're going to take care of all that for them. Uh, the service does the managed rotation. Uh, there's a couple different ways in which it, uh, you know, we take care of it. Uh, but for things like RDS databases, uh, they, they, it's totally fire and forget. They just, uh, you know, put in their secret. They give it a nice secret ID. Uh, and then the, the service to, totally manages the rotation on their behalf. Gotcha, so uh, once I initially kind of import the secret, yes. uh, I can kind of pass it off to Secrets Manager. I don't have to rotate anything, I don't Absolutely. have to update it. So it's going to rotate it once initially, right after you put it in, and then you get to set a schedule on how often, you, uh, or, or not, uh, if, if, if for some reason that uh, need was there, but you get to set the schedule on when it's rotated from there, and then your hands off entirely from there. So as a reformed ops engineer, guys, this is actually a really frustrating problem because you're right, you always either have that, that one like text file that that guy from 2004 right. left on his laptop that secretly has the production database keys. Um, you don't have to live like that anymore and you exactly. can use a managed service for it instead. Exactly. 
Um, so what are some common scenarios where you see customers really being excited about getting ready to use Secrets Manager? Yeah. So I mean, I think we've, we've touched on them a little bit already, right? But it's all about that application code that needs to connect to that third party, to that, that resource, right? Uh, and uh, you know, we're, we, we see great value in kind of A, uh, being able to deliver the secrets to that code in a way that doesn't require you know, all this elaborate orchestration that the different parties involved might not be totally familiar with. And then B, making it so that the, the clear text version uh, of that secret goes away, you get managed rotation. It, it, it's, it's really all about that app code uh, running up in AWS. So Twitch is clamoring for a demo. Um, Absolutely. And I hear sure. a rumor that you have a demo. Absolutely. So let's Happy demo to. away away. Okay, okay, cool. So I'm going to actually start. Uh, you're going to have to, hopefully, it won't offend the Twitch audience, but we're going to go to good old. Uh, you know, CLI mode here. Um, and I'm, I'm Twitch isn't allowed to complain because when I use the console, everyone complains about the console. Okay, so cool. You're not allowed to complain about all either right. way. So we're going to all amazing. We're going to do this a little bit with the end in mind first, and then we'll work backwards towards things like the console, right? And I realize this is a uh, overly simplistic example, but here's kind of the old way that we, if we just wanted to, you know, connect to a database from some Python. I code. like your engineer's naming conventions, by the way. Yeah. His directory is just, if so, you can't see, it's just named old way. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I acknowledge <laughs> up front that I am about to actually show secrets on, uh, on live stream here. Uh, trust that these have been well taken care of and trust that they will be thoroughly <laughs> nuked uh, when we're all done here, right? But this is the way we, we used to uh, tackle this problem, right? And maybe these things would have been plumbed in by chef or puppet or whatever the case may be, but we had to get them here, right? And then we'd have our, our great little uh, you know, uh, piece of Python that would, that would read that, all those values in and, and, and ultimately we get to the end of the day and uh, you know, we can go and, and we can query our database. If you're in right? Twitch right now talking about how we're leaking credentials on the live stream, it's for a dummy database, yeah. guys. It's exactly. okay. <laughs> uh, so if you, if you want to use those credentials, if you can figure out your way onto the Amazon network, into my private VPC, Have into a great my private time. subnet, go for it. Randall's uh, uh, working on it. Yeah, um, yeah. Please, please conference with him Absolutely. in Twitch chat if Absolutely. you're trying to hack our test yeah. database. If they can get in, we'll hire them probably, right? Uh, just kidding. Okay, so <laughs> send, send your resume exactly. <laughs> to Quinn's right. team. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so now let's look at the new way, right? And the new way, uh, we essentially, we get rid of that, that, uh, that gnarly file, right? And we just, uh, you know, we just reference some simple API calls. We've got we've to put in what the secret is that we need to pull down. And the rest of the code the, that will show you how the console gives you the boilerplate for all this in a second. But at the end of the day, you just get back the, the secret from, uh, from Secrets Manager. We've got to lash that up just to make our code compatible with the previous version to those same four parameters we had before. And then uh, from there, we, you know, we can run, the, the, literally it's the exact same uh, code in the new way and the old way um, you know, in these uh, trivial little select statements, right? Uh, I, I did change the, the print line so they know where <laughs> I was getting it from. But you, know, you, you got rid of that uh, credential entirely in the code. You didn't have to deliver it to the system at all. It's going to automatically rotate uh, behind the scenes. Uh, super, super powerful stuff. Um, so now that's, that's kind of the, the, the end game, right? Uh, if we wanted to kind of just uh, flip back and, and kind of actually look at how we got there, uh, let's, let's look at maybe a little bit, if we can, about how we would store a new secret, just to give folks a feel. Uh, so I'm going to go in and store a new secret. Uh, you can see that there's a couple of types of things that we've got really uh, tight integration with, where we can do the managed rotation. And then if they want to, if customers want to store arbitrary secrets where we don't have these integrations, they can write their own lambdas uh, to, to manage the rotation for them. Oh, cool. Uh, but I'm going to give it, uh, somebody can definitely grab uh, that uh, credential, right? Uh, so I'm going to, I, I specify kind of my initial value, right? This is what we talked about before. Uh, set uh, my KMS encryption key that I want to use it for. Uh, specify that this is the, the, the RDS instance I'm, I'm interested in. And then I'm going to give it uh, a name here, right? Quint demo. Let's skip the description. And then here's where we get up to that rotation part, right? So I can either, uh, if, I, if I, for whatever reason, I want to do more manual rotation uh, through an API call, right? I can dis uh, disable the automatic rotation. Or I can set the time in which I want to uh, <coughs> want to use it, and then uh, actually in this case I'm going to I'm going to use a different secret to actually rotate uh, the, the actual secret, right? So or the the, the actual 
uh, maybe this is a better way of putting is a root user of a database uh, rotating the application level credentials. Um, so we can, uh, we'll grab that, go from there, and then here again you can see kind of the final step, screen resolution aside, uh, is that you know we get, we give you that nice little snippet of code that kind of shows you just how to use it and how to get started. So from there I store it and uh, and now at this point we could kind of flip back to that other view and we'd be able to if that was actually a valid credential we'd be able to use it. So I have a question from Twitch that I actually think he's already answered, which is how do you control access to the secrets? Are they resources you can create IAM policies for? And absolutely, I, I am. I, I should have I should have highlighted that more. This is all fine grain access permissions with IAM in the background. So the reason that EC2 instance could query the secret was uh, was all uh, IAM permissions down to the individual secret level, uh, you know, with pathing and all sorts of great fine grain access controls. Awesome. Um, so wrapping up in the last kind of two minutes, um, can you give me kind of the bigger picture on, on where you see this kind of fitting into the process for organizations right now and then also what you think might be coming next for right. Secrets Manager? Right. So we launched today with a couple of pre-built integrations, right? RDS for Postgres, MySQL, and Aurora. Uh, you're certainly going to see a lot more coming in the space in terms of the, the types of credentials we can, uh, man or we can rotate and manage in that, uh, that more uh, properly integrated way. Again, customers today can use Lambda to integrate anything they want, but that's probably the big thing that we'll see coming here. More in the native built-in yeah. integrations. More native built-in integrations. Awesome. Well, Quint, it's been great. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, if you have more follow-up questions about this, keep posting them in chat and we'll make sure that the team, team sees them. Uh, and with that, we will be back in just a couple of minutes. <laughs>